Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper Trader, Guide Scout and Interpreter and Country Cook, Steve Hall here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila behind that camera. Hi Sheila. Hi. Today we're going to make fish casserole. In fact, we've already made it and we've already ate some, so we're going to show you what we did to get to this point right here. Come on over, let's get started. <music> Now don't let all these ingredients scare you off. It's really easy to make. I stopped at Kroger's and got a one pound bag of extra wide egg noodles. And you just chuck them in a cooker full of water, simmer them for a while, throw a little salt in there until they get tender, drain them, and that's what I got in this bowl right here. Lucky enough to be close to a lake where we can catch some crappie and some bluegill, and I know the folks up in Minnesota, man, you can make this out of walleye, northern pike, and if you don't get a chance to fish, don't worry about it. Just go to the store and get you some tilapia. So in this bowl, we're going to start out with two cups of crappie fillets that are baked and flaked. And that process is easy. Let me tell you about it. Just take five or six crappie fillets, spray a cookie sheet, lay them on there, put a little bit of salt and pepper on it, and bake it in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes, no more, and they'll just flake up real nice like this. We got two cups in here to start with. Now we're going to put in a half a cup of sweet onions and one cup of frozen peas that are thawed now. And I'll tell you, the flavor from these little guys is fantastic more so than getting them out of a can. Get the frozen peas, well there's a few of them that are still a little bit frozen in the middle, but let them come up to room temperature. Then also we're going to dump in one and a half cups of cooked mushrooms. Now these are already been sauteed on the stove and man they got great flavor. And let me show you what I did. This is kind of my little trick here. I saved a few of them out of here and let me show you. These are bulk white mushrooms at the store, and they're only like $3.99 a pound because they are bulk. And then I slice these little stems off until I get the bottom flat like that. And then I can lay it down, cut it this way. And if you want that kind of mushroom look in your casserole, just leave them out like that. If you want just the mushroom flavor and somewhat of a look, go like this right here. Make a couple more cuts. Now you got all the mushrooms you want in there. Now that I have my bowl back over here front and center, I've actually got two dishes of Mexican style blend cheese. And you just buy it in a bag like this here, eight ounce bag. I bought two bags of it. I just wanted to show you the bag. And I'm going to put about half of one bag in there and save the other bag and a half to put on top later on. We're also going to mix in two cans of cream of mushroom soup. And I saved a little bit of half and half over here, just about a quarter cup to kind of mix in my mushroom soup because I know that that's going to take a little bit to kind of dissolve some of that. So just put in about a quarter cup of half and half to help that mushroom soup dissolve and get around in the bowl there. Looking good. Fish casserole. Man, grab your kid and a fishing pole and some minnows and shoot down to the lake or get some crickets and go get some bluegills. Crappie casserole, because I am using crappie fillets, but you can have bluegill crappie casserole or just bluegill casserole or northern pike casserole and the list goes on and on. Now that we've got that in there, it's time for our noodles. I'm going to put in about a third of them here and kind of fold them in our mixture. Well, it's looking good. Ready for some more. I'm going to get all of them in here too. I got a nice big three quart casserole dish that I'm going to need for this recipe. And as I went through the process of making all this stuff, I salt and peppered the mushrooms when I was sauteing them in there. So they already have seasoning in them. 
and you're going to get some flavor from your onions, from your mushroom soup, but you can salt and pepper to taste. Man, got those mushrooms, those frozen peas, all them goodies. Look at that. That's working out perfect. Let me get my little casserole dish over here in place. Let me dump all this stuff in here. Oh, this is turning out perfect for this dish right here. Sheila and I kind of looked around for a smaller casserole dish, but then after we got looking at all the ingredients we had to go in there, we thought, <laughs> we better stay with this one. And it worked out perfect. This is a three-quart casserole dish, I'm pretty sure, but hopefully you can get a good eyeball on it and know how big it is for the one that you got in your cupboard. We're going to mash this out to the side, but we're not going to smash it down real flat. We're just going to kind of place it where it needs to be. Then we're going to put that other bag and a half of cheese on top of here. See, that's not enough. And this is just perfect. Along the edges here. All right, now it, we're going to kind of mash it in there just a little bit. Now it gets even better. We're going to put something else on top of this. Let me get it in place. Now Sheila and I have another casserole dish on our channel called Alabama Hash Brown Casserole and it's great. But the topping was even better. What we have here is two cups of Ritz crackers crumbled up and you don't have to put them in a bag, and roll them with a rolling pin, do all that stuff. You can just grab Ritz crackers with your hand, give them about four or five or six different crunchy here and they look just like that real easy. In these two cups of Ritz crackers we're going to put a half a cup of melted butter. Now that's just one stick. That works out to one stick or a quarter pound, one stick of butter, and we're going to mix that together and that makes it just perfect. We got this recipe from her mom's sister. I guess that'd be your aunt, wouldn't it? Down in Red Bay, Alabama. And she said you can go a little less or a little more but a half a cup of butter works about right and it's not too moist and it's not too dry and she's correct. Now we're going to slide this over here, move our beautiful crappie casserole back on top and we're just going to slide this around the top of our recipe and man, look at here. Does that look fantastic or what? Is that not just the perfect amount to cover that? Just beautiful. And in addition to that, we're going to cover this with aluminum foil. And we're going to bake this with the aluminum foil on at 350 degrees for one hour. The first half hour, we're going to leave the cover on. The second half hour, we're going to take the aluminum cover off. And we'll see you in one hour with the most delicious crappie casserole you have ever seen. Oh, and did I also mention that there's two cups of fresh crappies baked and flaked in here. That's the most important thing that I forgot to mention. Let's take a look at this. Ooey gooey flaky casserole. Man, does that look wonderful or what? Now I'm going to put a man-sized spoon in this bowl for me and then of course Sheila has to have one of these little baby lightweight spoons and we'll let her do just that. She usually likes cake out of the corner so I'll give her casserole out of the corner and it came out of there just so nice. Time for her little baby spoon. You know, am I missing something Sheila? The string hanging on the side. Is it still? Oh it's hanging down the side of the bowl? Yeah. Okay. If that bothers you, I'll eat it off there. All right, there you go. <laughs> All right perfect. <clears throat> She's my little director. Besides running the camera, she says, hey, you got something on your apron. You got something over here. There's a string of cheese hanging over the side, and you just seen her direct me. I'm going to leave it in the video, but look what we got. Is that a nice shot, Sheila, or what? Perfect. Crappie casserole with all those goodies in there and that golden brown Ritz crackers and butter. butter 
I'm going to leave that in there too. Crust, it is absolutely to die for. I know because we've already tried it. I say we already tried it because we already tried it earlier this year when we caught a bunch of crappies out here on Percy Priest Lake. Crappie casserole. You'll notice half of it's gone already because some other people in the house already got some before I got the camera turned on again. But give it a try. You're going to love our recipes. At least we hope you do. Subscribe to our channel. You'll see little Shotgun Red's face over here pop up pretty soon. If you just slide your pointer up there with your mouse and click it, you can subscribe to our channel. We hope you give us some thumbs up and all kinds of good stuff. We'll put another recipe over here for you that we really hope you enjoy. But most of all, is this the best crappie casserole that you'll ever make anywhere? If it ain't, it ought to be. This is Steve Hall in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila. Great job on the camera, Sheila. Well, thank you. Saying we'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. Bye-bye for now.